Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm talking about the latest Michael Mann film. I know he hasn't made a film in a while, but it is the film Ferrari. This is a film that's based off of the life of Enzo Ferrari, the uh, successful man car manufacturer of fast cars that, you know, it's competed at Le Mans and stuff like that. Um, James Mangold a couple years ago even made a film that was regarding um, Enzo Ferrari and uh, some people over at Ford at a competition with Ford v. Ferrari. But this is Michael Mann's new film. This is mostly based off of the life of Enzo Ferrari this time around, not a competition of any kind like that was based in Ford v. Ferrari. But we follow kind of Enzo Ferrari, where he's at, uh, kind of after World War II, closer to the 50s, I would say. And his company's at a point where uh, they're kind of facing bankruptcy. They're not super careful with their money. Uh, Enzo keeps dropping... Um, all this money on projects that really are kind of too expensive for the company to produce. Um, we also find out that his wife is also kind of his business partner. She's also in charge of finances and stuff, and she's not too happy with some of the choices that he's made. Um, there's also an affair that he's had with another woman that she's also not happy with him about, so there's always kind of tension between the two of them. The wife is played by Penelope Cruz. His new lover is basically played by Shalane Woodley. And uh, there's all this stuff that's going on in Enzo's life. There, um, there's a lot of tragedy in his life. There are some projects that have gone wrong. There is a situation that I won't spoil here involving some deaths at a race that uh, Enzo gets blamed for. So there's a lot of stuff that Enzo has to face over the course of this movie. We find out kind of about one of his children, about how, um, how one of his children isn't around anymore. And so there's a lot of stuff that he faces over the course of this film. And it's all during a time where he's facing bankruptcy and people are always on him about stuff. And the Ferrari business at this point in the movie is not doing super great. So this is definitely at a point where they're not doing great. Uh, they eventually get back up on their feet again at a later time in history. But the point that we see him at in this, over the course of this movie, the, the company really is not doing great. And there's a lot of tension going on in his personal life that makes all of this even worse for Enzo Ferrari. But overall, guys, I thought this film was okay. Uh, Michael Mann is one of those directors where he makes a film, obviously, every once in a while that is just absolutely wonderful, like Heat or Public Enemies or Last of the Mohicans. But he also can make films that are really not so great, like Black Hat and um, The Keep and some other stuff that a lot of people really did not care about from him. But when he makes a good film, he makes a great film. So he's one of those directors where when he does put out something good, he puts out something really good. Uh, Ferrari, unfortunately, is kind of in that middle ground area where it's not great, it's not terrible, but it is kind of middle of the road. There's things that are great about it, but there's things about it that aren't super great either. So let's go over some positives and negatives as to why I feel that way. Uh, so first and foremost, guys, uh, for the positives, there are some great race racing scenes in this movie. Uh, whenever Enzo or one of his clients or one of his people within his company are testing out cars or they're actually in a race, uh, all of these look great. They all look fantastic. They're well filmed. Michael Mann absolutely knows how to film action sequences. Uh, they, it just looks great. They look like they're really, really moving fast on the road. Uh, we really feel like we're in the car or in the vehicle with this person that's driving it. Um, it really looks great. It really does look very fast and very edge of your seat, uh, full of adrenaline while you're watching it. Uh, I really wish there was more of them, and I'll get to that in my negatives, but Whenever we do see racing scenes in this movie, they really are truly great to watch. Uh, definitely one of the highlights of this movie for sure. <clears throat> Adam Driver also gives a great performance as Enzo Ferrari. Really believable. You really kind of believe this accent that he takes on over time. Uh, you really kind of understand all the terrible stuff he's going through over the course of his life, specifically at this within this moment in time that the film's depicting. Um, just a really great performance. I understood all of his kind of troubles that were going on with him, and I thought Adam Driver really handled that very well. It also kind of looked like he gained a little bit of weight to be in this movie, too, so I almost wonder if they thought he was too skinny originally to be Enzo Ferrari, so he gained a little bit of weight to look more like the photorealistic version of what he looked like in photographs and stuff like that. So, great performance. Won't be shocked if he gets nominated for an Oscar. It's a great performance in this movie. Speaking of performances, too, Penelope Cruz plays the wife and business partner of Enzo Ferrari in this movie. She's fantastic. She's very much in command. She definitely has no problem letting Enzo Ferrari know when he's doing something that does frustrate her or is bad for the money or is bad for the company or is bad for their marriage. 
Um, and I think another reason why it was great having Penelope Cruz in the role, too, is she is very beautiful, obviously, as we all know. And it's a character where there's times where we just really love her and there's times where we really, really don't like her at all in this movie. There's times where she really is kind of out to make Enzo's life a living hell. She knows exactly kind of where to make him feel terrible, make him feel awful. She knows how to break offers that the two of them kind of set with each other. Um, so I, I do like, I like this idea of it's his lover, it's his wife, it's his business partner. She plays a key role in his life. But there's obviously some things going on there that are not good for the marriage, that are not good for him personally, that are not good for his mental or physical health. And I like how Penelope Cruz's performance definitely challenges Enzo's well-being as far as, you know, being a businessman and living a life of a family man. And so I thought that aspect of the performance that she gives is very strong here. Once again, another great performance in the movie. Um, I also thought the film did a great job depicting Enzo Ferrari as a public figure. Once again, kind of like basically modern day celebrities too. Whenever he's out in public, whenever people have questions about the company, there's always cameras, there's always paparazzi, there's always journalists that want to know answers on things. And I like how the film kind of depicts that. I like how the film never really gives Enzo Ferrari a break when he's out in public or he's out and doing something or he's doing something within his company. There's always people with questions for him. There's always people that wants to make business with him, that want Ferrari to merge with another company or, or something along that line. Um, so I do like how the film depicted Enzo Ferrari as a public figure. I thought that aspect of the film was very well handled. Uh, once again, going back to Michael Mann as a director, um, I thought his camera work and his cinematographer, whoever he hired for this, uh, also did a great job with all the cinematography in this film. They also chose some pretty great locations to film in, so I don't know if they actually did film some of this in Italy or not, but rather, wherever they were for in the world to film this, uh, the camera work was fantastic, its cinematography was fantastic. Definitely a great-looking movie for sure. I also like going back to that, what I just mentioned too, um, the settings and all the filming locations. They, You can definitely tell they found a lot of like open land to use for the fast cars to really kind of get, get the sense that there was some beautiful scenery that they used to um, test these cars out, whether it was in competition with other people or just testing the vehicles themselves. Uh, all very well handled. Um, I really liked all the settings and filming locations of this movie. But for my negatives of Ferrari... Unfortunately, this film has a very, very slow pace. It's definitely a slog to get through. There's just a lot of scenes that are really, really slow that really are not invigorating at all. Uh, there's just a lot of scenes where it just takes a very long time to get to the major next plot point to the next. Um, I did not care for the pacing of this movie. I thought that could have been better handled. Specifically for a film about Enzo Ferrari, you think that'd be much more faster paced just based on the subject matter alone. And also, too, I wanted to just learn more about Enzo Ferrari as the person. Um, because there is a certain moment they chose in history to basically... It's basically a, a week with Enzo in this movie, pretty much. Um, and as a result, um, there was just a lot of uh, stuff I wanted to learn about him. How, how did he come up with Ferrari? What was his childhood like? Um, how did him and Penelope Cruz, the wife, you know... How did they, you know, get romantically intertwined with each other? How did they meet? There's just a lot of stuff that's left on the table of things I would have liked to have seen answers for rather than just the specific moment in time in his life. There is moments where, and there's, there's brief snippets of it. There's flashback scenes and stuff too throughout the movie, but I just would have, would have preferred it is called Ferrari. Why not let us learn a little bit more about Enzo Ferrari? I mean, it's just, just a given when you make a biopic and I guess, you know, when you select a time in history, you kind of have to be able to cover the other stuff too, rather that is his past, rather that the stuff in the future that helped the Ferrari company in the end. I just really would have preferred a film where I learned more about the Enzo Ferrari person, rather just a, than just a select time in his life where we just cover a white, uh, um, a moment in time within the week of one of the weeks of Enzo Ferrari. And overall too, there was just um, a lot of unnecessary footage in the movie too. There's just scenes where Enzo goes to church and he goes to, you know, a grave of, of a passing of a family member or he goes to places where I guess it's kind of nice to know what, what he was going on with at the time and what he was doing. But there's just a lot of footage where it's just like, OK, well, what does that benefit for the movie? And after you see the whole film itself, there's just a lot of moments that you pick on the film where it's like, OK, well, that's kind of bizarre that you chose that and you chose this and you chose that. But no moments about his childhood, no moments about him forming the Ferrari company. 
no moments about the success of the company, no moments about the future of the company or anything like that. Uh, just a select moment in time with a lot of unnecessary footage that we had to deal with in the meantime, too. And also the film never really clarifies how did he go bankrupt. I mean, yeah, sure, I'm sure there's a lot of spending involved. I'm sure there was a lot of cars that were tested and things that he did business-wise that weren't smart to do that caused a lot of financial trouble for the company. But the film never clarifies how exactly did Ferrari go bankrupt and how exactly did they get out of it. And so the film never really clarifies this or answers this question. It's just kind of constantly brought up over the course of this movie and never really dealt with as far as answers were concerned. So I thought that aspect of the film was disappointing too. And overall too, I really just could have used more racing sequences. I think it's some of the better parts of the movie. I think it definitely shows some of Michael Mann's skills the best in this movie. Uh, would have preferred more of them. They don't do a lot of them in the movie. Uh, but when they do, they are fantastic to watch, obviously. The only downside is there's just not a lot of them in the movie either. So for Ferrari, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I think it's an okay watch. I think it's an okay rental. I don't know if I could send you to a theater to see this one necessarily. But if it's a nice rental, if it's um, on, up, up on streaming in the next couple of months, and you need something to watch on a rainy day, it's not the worst thing you could do. Um, there's certainly great things about it. It's not a terrible Michael Mann film by any stretch. But there is things about it that I think wear it down and, and prevent it from being a great film. Uh, but there are things about it that I think are really nice and really good about it too. So just go into this film knowing that it's not perfect. Uh, so I would say kind of middle of the road, rent this one if you want to. Uh, there's great things about it, but at the same time, there's just enough things about it too where I kind of can't fully recommend it either just because there is a lot of problems along the way too. So Enzo Ferrari, or just Ferrari is what it's called on the poster. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Um, it's an okay film. Just go into it knowing that there is some issues with it too.